Alan Ross and I'm the managing editor of APC Technologies. We're here at the IRIS ODSR, which is Operator Driven Safety and Reliability Conference in Sarasota, Florida. We're sponsored by IRIS and SDT and of course APC Technologies. We've done interviews with thought leaders and with practitioners of the Operator Driven Safety and Reliability programs and just the idea of changing the way we do what we do in maintenance and reliability in the marketplace. There's some fascinating interviews here. I hope you enjoy and I hope you learn. So my next guest is Brad Nana. Brad, this is, it's not fair, because you and I used to be roommates in a, in a previous life, so we're kind of like frat brothers here having a conversation. So I'm gonna try to keep on topic. We're at the um, ODSR conference, a reliability conference on operator-driven safety and reliability. And I wanna ask you some things about that. Before we go there, I know your background. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you got where you are right now. Well, thanks, and it is, a pleasure. Okay. So this is my brother. You are my brother. So anyhow. From um, another mother. From another mother, yeah. exactly. You know, so like many people in this industry, they started somewhere. I started right. in college at Go Pitt, University of Pittsburgh Electrical Engineering degree, and then um, was hired out of college from Westinghouse. Anybody knows about Westinghouse? It was stars. Westinghouse and General Electric. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, I was with Westinghouse for four years. They had some financial difficulties. Yeah. And they sold the business to Eaton Corporation. Right. So I became an Eaton Corporation. Great career. Love Eaton. Um, Got moved around a bit. Moved, didn't they, you? they moved me eight times in yeah. 18 years. So oh, wow. I was uh, a part of this leadership development program that they yeah. had, and it was great because they taught me, you know, product and application and engineering and sales and marketing. So that was that was my history. That was my that was my track record. Um, uh, through the course of my career, Siemens uh, gave me more of a global view of things. Spent a yeah. lot of time with Siemens over over in Germany. Loved it. And then uh, you know, Martin and I met. I don't know five six years ago. And, at, uh, at an at, yep, EPRA conference, exactly. right? At at a yeah, exactly. And you, I, I think it. you orchestrated that, did, that introduction. Yeah. And, you know, and it's a small world, and, yeah. and it's all about, in this industry, networking and talking exactly. with each other. And we're friends, right? Yeah. And, and that's what this industry has afforded us the opportunity to do. But Martin, um, you know, the, the CEO, president of Virus, he said, hey, Brad, I'd, I'd love for you to, to come join the team. So here I am. I am so glad you're here. And having this conversation with you I, now. I do want you to know he asked for a recommendation for you. And I said, he's my frat brother. We've seen each other in boxer shorts. Of course it's him. <laughs> of course. Anyway, yeah. so at this conference, uh, we're talking about operator-driven safety and mm -hmm. reliability. But before we get to that, you've seen it, you know, I've been with you, you've seen enough of the marketplace, the industrial, commercial marketplace, even utilities, yeah. you've seen it from the customer standpoint. What do you think is going on right now in the customer's mindset as it relates to reliability? Yeah, and I think that's a great question. I think you have to look at that in two stories. Okay. And when I say two stories, or maybe it's two timelines. Pre-COVID and post-COVID. Oh, wow, yeah. So yeah. I, I think that's what it was. Um, Pre-COVID, you had people in the office and in the building and in the facilities doing their work. Then COVID, the pandemic came, and it changed our lifestyles forever. Right. So a lot of people were working from, from home, working remotely. The general maintenance and inspections weren't getting done. So um, now we see this shift. And if you heard of this ratio, Alan, it, there's a 20 to 1, a facility yeah. engineer to every operator. So right. one, one engineer, facility engineer, to 20 operators. Can an engineer do that work? And they found out during COVID, they, 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 they can't. Even right. the engineer, the facility engineer, he may have been a part-time office to home. Right. So now the, the, the shift in the business is how do we educate, how do we set definitions and rule responsibilities and measurements that somebody once said to me, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So now we're putting that role of responsibility down to the operator. Right. And, and I think that's the biggest change. Uh, and, and, and you say it best, I think. Reliability and safety, they come together. You can't right. have one without the other. Right. And, and it's good that now we're educating it down to the operator, to the person that sees it daily, walks by it daily, hears what's happening with the equipment, whether it's an electrical motor, 
maybe some arcing in a switchgear, um, but they see it here at Daily as opposed to the facility engineer that may have where we're sitting in a corner office, right. it may not get to the plant. And it goes from time-based yes. testing and maintenance, just because it's in a manual that you've got to do this, to the operator not going to shut down because of a time. He's going to hear it, feel it, touch it, smell it, know it. Yes. I mean, you know when you smell a bearing burning? You don't need to know there's a bearing burning because it smells like, and it screams. Right. Right? It right. smells right. and screams at you. Um, there's one other thing that happened during COVID. We all thought plants would fall apart. They didn't. Mm -hmm. So all of this maintenance that we were doing, suddenly the sea level people are going time out. We really didn't degrade any because a lot of the operators had to do it. Now we're not just putting responsibility on them. We're giving them authority over their careers, their lives. It's a big deal. Yeah. Martin says it really well in one of his interviews. Flip the switch again. I want to go to um, this conference that we're at. Mm. We've been here three days, okay? Right. Uh, I thought, Brad, that I was at the point of my life I did not have to learn anything new. And I walk away from here learning stuff that's new that now I'm going, I'm passionate about that. We gotta get that message out. What did you learn from being here that you didn't know when you got here? Yeah, so I, I'm just like you. I'm just so fired up, passionate about this industry. And, and there's there's been so many takeaways. Obviously, uh, one of the things that we're talking to customers about and, and the light bulbs, you can see them coming up. Uh, for example, NFPA 70B. Oh yeah. The changes and what's happening yeah. in there. And one of, one of the things, and, and I had the pleasure of doing this early in my career, we would do testing and we would open panels of live switch gear. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you, you know, 20 years ago, yeah, yeah. And, and you're young, and you don't think of anything like, yeah. this could kill you. Yeah. And it can, and, and I don't say that to threaten or scare anybody, but if you have the ability today, which you do, with either inspection IR windows or ultrasound and leaving those panels closed and doing the same testing that you can do, Obviously, if you're going to open the panels, you're going to have some type of PPE. Yeah. If you're here in Florida, which we are, who wants to put a 100 cal suit on when it's 95 degrees and 95% humidity? You're like, <laughs> and you're trying to hold a wrench, right? Yes. It ain't going to happen, right? It, it, exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that's been one of the highlights is how do we make people aware of, of, of the inspections, yeah. timely inspections, uh, don't wait till break fix mode. Um, but if you have a way of tracking and collecting the data and you can start seeing the trends and now you can plan much more reasonably and much more cost effectively of when you do schedule your shutdowns. One of the things like about the 70B change is uh, 70B used to be, hey, we recommend. 70B mm -hmm. is now, it's a standard. That changes everything in the marketplace yes. because you don't go in and say, you know, it's a good idea to keep your people safe. You would think people would go, man, I don't want anybody to open up a hot panel, but they do, they, they do yes. all the time. And some of the worst people are the electricians that say it hadn't burned me yet. But if you've been burned, if, if you've seen what happens from an explosion from an arc flash or death from an arc flash, it's, it's huge. So now they put some teeth behind it and said it's a standard. So suddenly I think people are going to look at this and say, oh my gosh, we need to be doing something. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what this whole conference has really done for me. Talk a little bit about the, the you, you mentioned it, but is there going to be pushback from operators? Because some operators are going to say, wait a minute, you're not going to pay me anymore and you're asking me to do more. Uh, and then there's others that are going to go, this is an opportunity to learn and hopefully mm -hmm. companies say look if we can cut our maintenance costs and reduce mm -hmm. that we want to share the load i hope that's what happens but yeah. um i'm an operator tell me why it's in my best interest to to do this yeah and, and i think it, so there there may be some pushback there, there's no question there's going to be some pushback however if you have the ability and it's about taking ownership who right. is taking ownership? So, Alan, I am charging you to take ownership of this section of the plant and this, this facility. Um, and if, if you look at career progression and career paths, those people that raise their hands and say, I want this, I want a, I want a career I path, I want to do this, I do own it. So, and I, I think that's the whole message of selling the per personal ownership of things. Right. Um, you know, no one had to tell me, or I'm sure you too, because yeah. you and I are cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Alan, will you take personal ownership with it? Of course you will. <laughs> You're gonna raise your hand and say, I'm glad you asked. Because guess what? Yeah. They are doing it anyways. Yeah. Um, and it's just giving them the tools and, and, and the responsibilities 
And let's be honest, if it costs you a little bit more, a little bit more money as a, as a manufacturer or facility, wouldn't you rather pay them and pay that to know it's done correctly as opposed to going into a break fix mode and then it's costing you tens of thousands of dollars? Preach it, brother. Right? That's exactly right. You're yeah. going to save money a lot of money by having people catch it before break fix. It's the PF curd in reliability we talked about. Yes, exactly. Catch it before it gets too far down the, 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 the PF curd, because once it gets down that curve, it costs you every single time it moves until finally it is as much as 10 to 100 times That's more right. costly to yep. fix it than it is to keep it going. Yeah. Brad, it's always so a pleasure. It's great to be here at the conference with you. Let's Thank go to you. more together. Okay? Yes, please. Thank okay. you.